I've reviewed the Flasher Atmos before, and Cooler Master now has this variant, which is the Atmos Stealth, the blacked out version. And when all things are considered, this is the best 240 AIO that I have tested. Welcome to Machines and More. Today I'm sharing my review of the Cooler Master Atmos Stealth. This is a 240 millimeter version. I've covered the original Atmos before. I was very impressed with that original one. And what I'll do here is just revisit the Atmos with the current gen CPU and share why this is such a good cooler. So real quick before we begin, the cooler was provided by Cooler Master for the purposes of evaluation and big thanks to them for their support. However, this video is not sponsored by Cooler Master, and you could expect independent and objective feedback from all of my reviews here on this channel. Okay, first off, one great aspect of the Atmos, even before you begin to install it, is the compatibility in its standard form factor, because it features a 27 millimeter radiator, it's got braided tubing, center thickness 25 millimeter fans. If you have a limited amount of room to mount a rad in fans, this does maximize the compatibility. Um, in addition, the Atmos pump block is only 53 millimeters tall. It can also occupy a very small footprint, so that fits really easily on boards, even with more restrictive layouts, such as the Z890-I Strix I tested with. You can even take off that cover if you're really strapped for space and you end up with about 43 millimeters there. So uh, for builds like the Form D T1, where you're allocating space to a thicker GPU, this is really good. Uh, two, the Mobius fans are high performance units that most users will never feel compelled to need to upgrade from. While the original Atmos used sickle flow edge fans, which are more looks versus performance oriented, the Atmos Stealth uses a high performance fan called the Mobius that Cooler Master markets on its own as a high performance option. These are a special edition of the Mobius that runs at 2400 RPM, so they're faster than your regular ones uh, that top out at 2050 RPM. Mine measured in at 2300 RPM. Uh, Cooler Master also offers a very high 3200 RPM Mobius OC, which this one is not. As far as I can tell, it's just the regular Mobius that's specced at a higher RPM. So from that one spec change alone, you can tell this unit is geared towards performance. By itself, each one of these is about $25 US. And with many competitors in this space, you will often find more generic fans. The Cooler Master is in a unique position where they make these uh, fans as a standalone performance product that is competing with the likes of the Noctua NFA 12x25 and things like the Be Quiet Silent Wings 4 level 120 millimeter fan and they also make AOs. While the noise profile is not quite as polished as something like Noctua's NFA 12x25, it is still quite good. At 50% or about 1350 RPM, they will typically not add a perceivable amount of noise to a system with just a couple of case fans. And I'm not saying that you should run them that fast, but these uh, did test into a max of about 2300 RPM. And at that max RPM, they added only about 5.4 decibels over the noise floor. Whereas another high performance unit uh, in the Be Quiet Silent Loop 3, which I recently tested with the Silent Wings 4 fans that added 9.7 decibels, at its max speed and the Atmos Stealth actually outperformed the Silent Loop 3 at that level. Three, the pump unit is incredibly quiet. Even running at 100% and turning off the fans, it was so difficult to hear. And I'm not sure the noise recording that I'm about to share will even be perceivable. Uh, go ahead and give it a listen. And at the same time, I'll just give you the noise profile rundown of the Mobius fans. This is 70%. This is what the fans are. 90%, 100%, really hard to get the sound. The biggest reason this unit is so good is, um, well, the performance is so good. Ever since I tested uh, the PL240, I've been impressed by what Cooler Master is doing with his pumps and cold plates in their high-end AIOs, and this one is simply incredible, just like the Atmos. 
And just looking at the performance data here, tested with a, an Intel Ultra 9 285K running at the uh, 240 watts for the Blender render, it handily beats what I would consider other high-end performance in the Silent Loop 3 and Arctic's Liquid Freezer 3. For example, at each noise normalized level, meaning that measured noise is equivalent between all these units at each tested level, the unit came in considerably ahead on CPU temps. Now that difference was especially pronounced at the low noise level where you'll often see a lot of fans struggle with static pressure. But these Mobius fans are already chugging along and while the Silent Wings 4 fans do catch up uh, quite fast once they uh, hit their stride, there is still a very consistent advantage that the Atmos Stealth has. In fact, the ensemble here is so good that even at the 50% level where added noise is hard to notice, it is running the 285K at a very acceptable level. So there's not a huge motivation to run these above 90%. The 2200 RPM level was pretty close to the best performance that this unit can deliver with the CPU. And in fact, with an extra 100 RPM on the fans, there is not a measurable difference between the two intervals. Still though, performance here is incredible. In addition to the performance, there's still a host of other features. Uh, the way this is packaged is extremely user-centric. It's basically a step-by-step -step guide as you unbox to the easiest way to set this all up. Uh, the fans are pre-mounted, you have daisy-chained fan cables, the tubing clips that they provide allow you to orient the tubing in the easiest run possible. There's also a thermal paste stencil in case you are new to the game and not exactly sure how much paste to apply. Now this is subjective of course, but I do also like how clean this version looks. The Mobius fans usually have blue accents, but these are blacked out here and there's no RGB either, but they do offer the regular Atmos, which has the ARGB if you want that. One small observation I had was uh, for something called Stealth, the design insert is still gray, like the regular Atmos. It's just not a big deal. Uh, if it really bothers you, then they are customizable. Uh, you could just 3D print one in the design of your choice with black filament, and uh, Cooler Master does provide you the 3D printing files for that. So yeah, this addition to the Atmos family is great. The Stealth version should save you around about $10 over the RGB Equip version as well. So I think the 240 is going for $120 US at most retailers. 360 millimeter version is $135 US, and that's coupled with a five-year warranty, which is decent, although not class leading, that you really can't go wrong with this. Uh, just It's just such a good ensemble that Cooler Master has put together. So that'll do it for this one. Make sure you leave a like and are subscribed for more content like this. Uh, go ahead and check out the Cooler with the links down below and a hearty thanks for watching today.